Remember, I'm not trying to be hard on him. I'm just trying to be honest, trying to be accurate. The guy has been suffering on a low calorie diet his entire lifting career. He doesn't understand that you're allowed to eat more. And so look at him as he trains. Does he look like he has a normal amount of body fat? Or does he look excessively lean? Coach Greg, in today's video, Tristan Lee goes over the mistakes he's made as a trainer when he first started. And so he made a great video. It's a great list, but I got to tell you this. Got to be honest. He got it wrong. And so I'm going to start the video by saying what he actually got wrong. And then I'm going to go over his video and explain the mistakes he's made in the video. And so first things first. If Tristan Lee could go back in time and change something, this is what I'd suggest he change. Eat more. Eat more food. You were under 5% body fat for multiple years as a teenager. You were not eating enough. You can't possibly grow muscle the proper way if you're not eating enough food. And so the number one mistake Tristan Lee made growing up was he didn't eat enough. And of course, there's many reasons for that. Trying to be an athlete, thinking the leaner, the better, body dysmorphia. And so if you're a teenager struggling, trying to get down to single digit body fat, please stop. It's the number one mistake Tristan Lee made. And the second biggest mistake, going carnivore. Sorry, all you carnivore lovers, but as a growing teenager, he shouldn't be cutting out all the different food groups. There are four food groups for a reason. Not saying you have to eat them all to survive, but for the vast majority of people, it's a lot healthier to eat fruits and vegetables than to simply avoid them. And so he says he fell into this by accident. He was talking with his mother that he wanted to be a professional soccer player. And so it led to a keto diet because he did a lot of cardio. Does that make sense? Just because you're doing a lot of cardio, trying to be a soccer player, doesn't mean you should follow a keto diet. How many of the best cardio endurance athletes in the world follow keto or carnivore diets? Almost zero. And so the second biggest mistake he made, skip it out on food groups that he didn't need to. And aside from those two things, I think he did it bang on. I think he got it right. Tristan is a very intelligent individual. He trains effectively. He knows what he's doing. And so if he rewound the clock, if he just changed those two things, he would make night and day differences, improvements in his physique. If you could press rewind, turn back the clock, and restart your fitness journey, would you do it? Yes, I absolutely would. Who wouldn't? Progressive overload is the backbone of all training progression. Listen, people, it's not that complicated. Progressive overload is not the number one mistake people are making. You go to the gym and you train harder than last time we all get it every single person that goes to the gym and i do mean every one of them starts out weak and it gets stronger they lift heavier weights for more reps more volume and so on and so i don't think it's a mistake any of you are making how many of you raise your hand right now think that you're a teenager and you'll never have to increase the weight on the bar ever that you'll never have to try for an extra rep Whatever you did today, 75 pounds for 10 reps on the bench, you do that for the rest of your life, you're going to turn into the Mr. Olympia. Did anyone raise their head? Stop raising your head, you clown. We're not joking around here. And so I know all of you know this. Your goal when you go to the gym to get stronger, lift heavier weights, progress, and get better than last time. We all know this. And so no one's making that mistake. And so we don't need it in this video. Initially, when I started training each session, I didn't have the goal of adding 10 pounds, 5 pounds, or even 2.5 pounds to the bar or performing an additional set or even an additional rep. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't be going to the gym every workout and thinking you need to add 10, 5, or 2.5 pounds to the bar. Imagine, every time you go to the gym, you get 5 pounds stronger. And you're your world record holder. It doesn't work like that. You could quite literally go to the gym every day for a month, never lift a heavier weight, and still progress. You might have better technique, slower form, better contraction, my muscle connection, and so on. And so please don't expect to go to the gym and every single day to add weight to the bar. That is a huge mistake. It takes time. The body doesn't adapt this quickly. Even on performance enhancing drugs, you can't get stronger every single day. So essentially what this could look like is four weeks of training progression, starting with reps in reserve and leaving some gas in the tank. So not going particularly all out. No, a beginner is not going to go to the gym and do a four week training block and then progressively get heavier for four weeks and then take a deload and repeat. That's way too much for most beginners to ever worry about. You go to the gym, learn how to effectively perform the exercise and slowly get better over time. You do not need to follow an overcomplicated meso cycle where you start out easy and every week you get harder, then take a deload, repeat, lighten the weight, and increase. You show up to the gym consistently, you learn how to properly perform the exercise, and you just train. Over time, you're going to start training closer to failure. You don't need to train to failure at the start. 
and years later, then you can worry about mesocycles. cycles, but not for a beginner. And so Tristan, looking back when he first started lifting weights, perhaps he was 12, he didn't need to follow specific mesocycles, cycles, do all this run around, reps from failure and so on, just show up and work out. And FYI, beginners should not train to failure. If you first start going to the gym, you shouldn't be training to failure and or beyond. Drop sets, four reps, supersets, it's too much. You show up to the gym, you hold back a little bit, and over time, if you're not sore, you can then train harder than last time. So we're here with Richie Chan, IBB Pro. What are three things that you wish you knew when you started lifting that you think would have helped you along the way? Definitely increasing the volume. No, you don't increase the volume when you're a beginner. Oh, looking back to when I first started the gym, I should have done more volume. No, you shouldn't. You should have just showed up, performed the exercises, and held back. When you first start, it should look like you're warming up. It shouldn't be hard. You start doing five to 10 sets of an exercise when you're a beginner, it's a huge mistake. And so no, that's not what you do. As the years went on and I got deeper into my training progression, I recognized that I did need to switch the style of training that I was doing in order to mitigate the amount of plateaus that I was hitting. And so he's saying all this stuff, but what good is it if you're not eating enough calories? He's 5% body fat, trying to progress, trying to be a professional soccer player. It's too much. And so if all he did was eat more food, he would have been a better athlete, perform better, increase his strength, increase his muscle building ability. And so that is the mistake he made. It was actually my mom initially who got myself and Braden and Tyler into a low carb ketogenic approach. Nope. And so what should have happened is, Tristan Lee, you need to eat more food. Not Tristan Lee, you need to go on a low carb ketogenic diet with a high amount of fats. It's not the answer. You just needed to follow the four food groups, eat more calories, perhaps be in a slight calorie surplus, and gain some weight. Is anybody going to debate me? Does anyone think that Tristan Lee should have been on this series of a diet trying to maintain 5% body fat as a teenager training for soccer? Prioritizing nutrition definitely allowed me to perform far better than I ever really thought I could. And so no, it didn't allow him to perform far better than ever thought I could. He could have performed even better on a regular diet. Getting your protein in. When I was younger, I didn't know to shoot. For every body weight, a pound you have, you need at least a gram of protein. And I find like all the young guys just don't eat enough protein in their diet. And so no, the problem is not that the young people lifting the gym are not getting enough protein. And you don't actually need a minimum of one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Studies actually show that 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. After that, there's no real benefit. And even if you're only taking in half a gram of protein per pound of body weight, if you're eating enough carbs and fats, as in your diet is not in a deficit, you're eating a surplus, they have a protein sparing effect. That's right. If you're not eating in a deficit, you're eating the proper amount of carbs and fat, they spare the protein and allow it to be used to build muscle. But if you're eating in a deficit, trying to maintain single digit body fat, or in Tristan's case, sub 5%, then a lot of the protein you're eating is being converted to energy to fuel your workouts rather than to build muscle. And so if you're watching this, you don't need to think, oh, I need to eat so much protein. Chances are you're already eating plenty. Unless you're a vegetarian or vegan, if you're eating from all four food groups, chances are you're eating plenty of protein. So long as you're not on a diet, don't worry about it. Just eat. Eat. When I first started, I just kind of ate as much as I possibly could, and I got pretty heavy. It took a long time to cut all the weight. And so there's a good tip. When he first started training, he ate as much as possible, gained a lot of body fat, and then he had to cut down and lost a lot of muscle in the process. And so my advice, maintain a healthy weight, you know, 15% body fat, perhaps 20, depending on the person, and stop with the mentality of eat big to get big. You eat big to get big and fat. All you need to do is eat enough to main gain, keep your body fat at a healthy weight, and gain muscle over time. That's how you do it. And so, for example, you're 15 years of age. You have 15% body fat. You can train for five years. You're still at 15% body fat, but now you're 30 pounds bigger because you added a ton of muscle. That's how it works. You don't have to think, oh, I need to gain 50 pounds in the next six months. I'm going to bulk and then cut, bulky cut. That's a waste of time. It's not going to help. And what bulking and cutting does do for a vast majority of people, it leads to body dysmorphia. You gain all the weight. You look in the mirror. You're unhappy with the weight gain. Then you cut, you starve yourself, you're losing muscle in the process, and so you continue to yo-yo diet, your weight goes up and down, you gain the weight, compare yourself to when you were lean, you're no longer happy with how you look, and so why not just main gain? You're always at a healthy body fat percentage, one of which you're comfortable with, and you slowly build muscle from there. 
That way you're always happy. You're always doing good. Your body needs time to adjust to the changes that you're introducing to her. Jeff highlights a very good point here, as I've posted about in my previous videos. And so clearly, you see his video he posts. 4% body fat for two years. That's the biggest mistake. Video could end right here. Hey guys, if I could redo it, I wouldn't maintain 4% body fat. Perhaps 10. I would have been a lot healthier, felt better. Would have felt better mentally, physically. Everything would have been better. And so please don't make the same mistakes as I did. Stop trying to maintain single digit body fat. It's important to recognize that insecurity and to work from a place of wanting to make yourself better and not from a place of wanting to beat yourself down. Exactly. And if you're insecure about your weight, the leaner, not the better. Being 5% body fat is not better than 10. 10 is not better than 15. 15, perfectly healthy. And so unless you're in a very specific sport competing at the elite level, you don't need to drop your body fat any further. And so for most athletes, they compete at the highest level, 8 to 12% body fat. But for teenagers, do you really need to be this lean? Of course not. You have your whole life to peak. You don't have to be 16 years of age trying to maintain 8% body fat to be an elite athlete. You have plenty of time to get there. Slow and steady wins the race. Although my 15 minute HIIT workout seemed like the most intense calorie burning workout, it's really unlikely that it justified me eating an additional 500 calories. Think of it. Do you really think Tristan Lee had to worry about burning off additional calories or that that extra 500 calories made a difference? He was literally maintaining 4% body fat for two years. And so although a HIIT workout doesn't burn more calories than steady state, that's right, HIIT cardio does not burn more calories than steady state, and that is including the afterburn. Sorry to break it to you, but in 15 minutes, no one, and I repeat, no one in the world is burning 500 calories. They're not burning 500 calories in a 15 minute HIIT workout. And so Tristan, in as great a shape as he is, I doubt he even burned 200 calories in 15 minutes. And so the next time you're thinking, oh, I did 15 minutes to hit, 20 minutes to hit, I can eat a burger and fries, no problem. You can't. But if you're already single digit body fat, you shouldn't be adding in cardio just to burn off extra calories. The cardio you're doing, it should be for your sport, to make you fit, to increase your heart health. You shouldn't be thinking every time you do cardio, oh, I'm burning off that cheeseburger. I'm burning off these calories so that I can eat. Just do cardio for the love, the enjoyment of it. Anytime that I would indulge in any sort of sugary treat or something that would set off additional hunger cravings, I would actually overeat for what's required for building muscle. And so you can see, even to this day, he still doesn't grasp the gravity of what he did in the past. He's saying, you know, I didn't understand my hunger cues. And when I ate something with sugar, I just way overdid it. I ate way too many calories for my muscle building needs. Look at his physique from when he first started training to now. Has Tristan Lee ever in his life been overweight, even to the slightest? The answer is no. And so has there ever been in a point in his life where he's overeaten? Absolutely not. So no matter how many of those carbs, sugary sweets, all that stuff that he's ever eaten in his life, he never overdid it. If he did, he would have too much body fat. And I've never seen him above 15%. And so of course, he's never overdone it. But in his own mind, he's thinking, oh yeah, when I eat carbs, it makes me want to eat. And so I can't eat carbs because then I'll be too hungry. I'll eat too much of it. The answer is no. Even today, Tristan, he's probably too lean for his own good. Being single digit body fat his entire life, it makes it very difficult to put on muscle. And so yeah, he has a great physique. He has muscle. But imagine how much bigger he could be. Imagine how much more muscle, more strength he could have if he were to actually eat more calories. So imagine if he'd never discovered carnivore, never discovered keto, and just ate a regular diet, all four food groups, and had an additional 500, perhaps even 1,000 extra calories a day. Perhaps Tristan would be 20 pounds bigger, way more muscle, benching 400 pounds. We just don't know. As soon as I eliminated those sugar cravings, those additional snacks, and stuck to a strictly carnivore, ketogenic-esque diet, I was able to assess my hunger cues a lot better. Does anyone think he was better able to assess his hunger cues? If so, why was he at 4% body fat for two years? Why was he struggling to eat? Why was he developing body dysmorphia? And so do you really believe this? Do you think that this is true? Remember, I'm not trying to be hard on him. I'm just trying to be honest, trying to be accurate. The guy has been suffering on a low calorie diet his entire lifting career. He doesn't understand that you're allowed to eat more. And so look at him as he trains. Does he look like he has a normal amount of body fat? Or does he look excessively lean? And then I could fuel for my training accordingly. If I'm more hungry, I eat more. If I train more, I feel more hungry. And I know that I'm not just eating for the sake of it or I'm eating because I'm snacking. And so people are very critical of me. Coach Reggie preaches main gaining. It's so wrong. He's caused so many disorders of people. 
Really? Tristan Lee is single-digit body fat, trying to gain muscle. I preach 15% body fat, and so I would suggest Tristan eat more. And so does main gaining not make sense? It doesn't mean to maintain 5% body fat. It means to maintain a healthy body fat that's reasonable for you and build muscle from there. If I went back in time to optimize my newbie gains or even just regular gains over the years, I would have told myself to shoot for at least seven to eight hours of quality sleep per night. And you know why he didn't get enough sleep? Because he was over dieting. And when you over diet, you have increased cortisol levels. It makes it very difficult to sleep. And so if he could go back in time, he didn't have to try to sleep more. He simply had to eat more. It would have automatically led to him having a better night of sleep. And so you can see one little thing. And it's not really little. Eating enough food, that can solve so many other of life's problems. You don't eat enough, you're stressed, you're not able to get enough sleep, you have brain fog, lower testosterone levels, decrease in libido, you can't build as much muscle. And so one negative thing leads to another. And the solution, how simple was it? Eat more. Now I'd say it's probably 10 to 20 effective sets per week. And as you get more and more into training, you'll learn what effective sets truly are. And so I have to disagree with Tristan Lee here. He's saying to do 10 to 20 effective sets per week for training as a beginner. That is for more of an advanced lifter. Although the research does support 10 to 20 sets, it's not for a beginner. Beginners, you just show up you learn the motions, and you enjoy the gym. There should be no pressure to get in a certain amount of sets or volume per week. You simply have to do more than you're doing to experience growth. And so if you've never been to the gym before, and you go into the gym and do one set, just one, and it's not even hard per muscle group, you are going to improve. The body recognizes that. And the reason for that, as Tristan Lee has explained this video very well, is progressive overload is what leads to hypertrophy. And so if you haven't done anything and you join the gym, less is in fact more. And so you could start out in the gym, you do one easy set per muscle, per week even. Perhaps you go in twice a week, three times a week, so long as you don't go too hard. And you listen to your body. After the first day, if you were sore, don't go harder, go easier. You don't necessarily take a deload week, you just don't push harder. You go to the gym, you lift a weight, but don't go near failure, take it easy. And if you go to the gym and you train and you're not sore at all, the next time, now go heavier or go for an extra rep. And keeping progressive overload in mind over the next several months and or years, you then progress towards 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week. And why is it 10 to 20? Well, if you're training kind of on the easy side, not going near failure, perhaps you need to do closer to 20. But if you're training really hard, you're training to failure. Perhaps you only need 10. Some muscles, they fatigue faster than others. For me, my hamstrings. I can look at a hamstring machine and my hamstrings are gonna grow. I get sore without even training them. But for another muscle, like my shoulders, I can do set after set and they don't really feel it. And so my shoulder volume is a lot higher than for my hamstrings. And so everyone is different. You might have one muscle that's very stubborn, another one that grows like a weed, it's easy. And so adjust your training based on how sore you are and how recovered you feel and slowly over time progressive overload. There is no rush. Don't think you need to progress very quickly that every week you need to add weight to the bar or you're doing something wrong. You don't need mesocycles. You don't need specific programming. You just need to show up to the gym, fall in love with it, develop a passion for it, and then go from there. And as far as supplements go, when you first join the gym, you don't need any of them. Save the supplements for once you get older. Once you reach a sticking point, and at that time, have so many supplements available from Harder Than Last Time on my website. You can use code GREG to save you 10%. Things like protein bars, creatine, beta-alanine, GO2 max, Acti Builder, 3 Test, G Test, Delta Sleep, Protein Powders, whether it's Whey, Casein, Vegan, G Shred, Ashwagandha, Tom Cataly, Ali's Favorite, Multivitamins, and Perilite for your intra workout. And don't forget about your greens. But hopefully, you're having a balanced diet. You don't need that anyway. And I'm working on so much more. And of course, I have cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, doing phone consults. But if you have no money at all, you want something free. I have a free diet and training program. It's over 50 pages. And so if you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do, it's made for beginners and intermediates and advanced. Everyone, very specific to your own individual needs. Covered all the basics. And so click the link in the description, enter your first and last name, enter your email address, and voila, free training program. Don't say I never did anything for you. 
Of course, watch more of my videos. Go and check out Tristan Lee's video. Excellent video going over so many points that he felt would help to build muscle in the long run. And so please head over to Tristan Lee's channel. He has quality channel, very good information. The guy knows what he's talking about. Please subscribe to his channel. Ending it here. Subscribe right now. Click that bell button to get notified. Don't forget to leave a comment that helps a lot. And like the video if you liked it. Could you press the like button right now? Also, watch one of those two bloops. Of course, enter code GREG to get 10% off. Click the link in the description. Get all the stuff that I'm doing right now. And until next time, I am out.